Welcome back. This is part two of a series in which we are taking a closer look at a TNA original, someone who's had a lot of history here, Frankie Kazarian. Frankie, thank you so much for sitting down with me this evening. Last time we talked, it was about your early days in TNA and what led to you leaving. So let's talk about what came next for you. Where did you go after you left TNA? So it's 2014 and I've been in Impact Wrestling TNA for over a decade. And I established myself and, you know, at that time was a veteran. Now I'm kind of off in the wild, still teaming with my friend Christopher Daniels. And he had a lot of history with Ring of Honor at the time. I did not, but I was an established wrestler. So Ring of Honor was the next step. And I found very quickly when I got there that I need to prove myself all over again. I'm not, I can't rest on what I've done because these guys here, they're doing a whole nother thing. And I saw that in the same way I saw the X Division when I started in TNA and Impact in 2003. This Ring of Honor style, what you want to call it, was something that was very attractive. You know, these guys, the Briscoes, Roderick Strong, I remember Jimmy Jacobs telling me, I'm just a new guy, but you know what? He was right. In, in that company, that's what I was. I was a new guy. So it gave me a new motivation to almost reinvent myself in a way and show, oh, hey, you know, I'm not just a TNA guy, I'm a wrestler. And wherever the best wrestling is, that's where I'm gonna be. And Ring of Honor was for the next five years. Obviously, you and Christopher Daniels had a lot of success in your time at Ring of Honor, but after that five years was up, what was next for you? Ring of Honor, again, just as special to me as my early time here. Again, multiple tag team champions, six man titles with Scorpio Sky, one of those guys that I have that bond with. And we had a great time. The end of 2018, I'm very good friends with Matt and Nick of the Young Bucks, Cody Rhodes at the time. There was this project. We all were talking to this man about a project that we thought was going to be something different. It just so happened that the stars aligned. All of our contracts were up at the same time at the end of the year. 2019, I'm part of what would become AEW. And again, young startup company, the same way TNA was a young startup company when I started. And I had one of those moments where I thought my ship had finally come in. This is cool. I'm going to be again on the ground floor of something that could potentially be very good. What I found out, and I enjoyed a lot of my time there, I was part of the first tag team champions in that company. A lot of my friends are still there, but what I found out pretty early on is that I had a completely different philosophy of the way I thought professional wrestling should be presented. And I said it when I first came back here, every man, every woman reaches a point where you can stay with the status quo or you can bet on yourself. And it was time for me to finally bet on myself. And so what led you to choose to leave AEW and come back here to Impact Wrestling. There's this portion of these veteran wrestlers who give advice, and it's uh, one of the things I heard all, all the time, and I still hear to this day, is just take the money, brother, don't worry about it, just take, you know, and most of the guys that say that have never even been in the position to just take the money. I don't like being comfortable. I like to be challenged. I wasn't happy just being a guy taking the money. I'm a professional wrestler, and I learned that the most valuable thing I can give somebody is my time, and that's the most valuable thing I can ask in return. Scott Demore, Impact Wrestling, values me and values the time I can give them, so I, in turn, value them. You can't tell the story of Frankie Kazarian without talking about Impact Wrestling. My history is here, my legacy is here, and I decided when I bet on myself, that my future is here with Impact Wrestling.